Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Tuesday, February the 20th. It is game day. Tonight the Vancouver Canucks host the Colorado Avalanche at Rogers Arena. The Canucks are coming off their 6-1 thrashing, pummeling, whipping of Brad Marchand and the Boston Bruins on Saturday night. Meanwhile, the Colorado Avalanche have fallen off a little bit from their hot pace of January. They now sit five points out of the wildcard spot and in sixth spot in the ultra-competitive Central Division. So still a good team, but might be hard-pressed for them to make the playoffs. Still a lot of good players on that team, obviously. A lot of talent. I'm not going to tonight's game. My son, Sean, is using my tickets, and he's bringing his girlfriend, Fernanda, as a bladed birthday gift. It was her birthday yesterday. All right, so the Canucks aren't going to be making the playoffs either, but they're certainly always in the news. And one name who's been in the news in the past week is pending unrestricted free agent defenseman Eric Goodbranson. And it sounds like, from everything we're hearing, that he will be signed this week, prior to the trade deadline, and in fact, it could happen as early as today. And we are hearing numbers such as $4 million for maybe three or four years. Now, this extension would have seemed unfathomable a few weeks ago. Most of Canucks fans and media expected him to be traded at the deadline flip for a pick or so as the Canucks continue to rebuild. But obviously, the Canucks brass, Jim Benning, Trevor Linden, Travis Green, they see something that they some things that they like in Eric Branson. It might not make a lot of the hockey analytics people happy. It might not make a lot of Canucks fans happy given some of his, his metrics and his advanced stats. But I'm going to talk about two elements that the, Eric Branson brings to the Canucks that they are solely missing or potentially solely missing next season. Number one is toughness. And yes, he Branson might not play as tough or as rough as you, you expect from someone his size, but he still does bring an element of, of grit and of meanness to the back end when he wants to be. And I know they wanted that from Trampkin when, when Trampkin played here last year, but Eric Branson needs to be that guy sometimes. Because you look at the blue line, we don't exactly have a bunch of rough and tumble guys back there. You guys, you have guys like Troy Stetcher and Ben Hutton and Derek Pouliot and, and Michael Delzato, all good players, and they can be tough enough when they have to be, but you wouldn't really say that they're really, really tough to play against. Well, maybe Troy Stetcher always getting beat up and, and slashed in the face. But aside from that, Alex Edler is the only defenseman who comes even close to matching Eric Branson's stature. But I think it's clear that the Canucks need, they want a physical presence, a big body uh, to clear guys out from in front of the net. And I and want that presence in the back end, on the back end. And you look throughout the Canucks lineup, you know, we talked about Jake Vertanen. He could be tougher, play tougher. He has the potential. We talked about Darren Archibald with his signing a couple weeks ago. And, of course, the the lack of Derek Dorsett, forced to retire because of injury. So I think, really, they're looking at Eric Branson to be one of the tough guys on the team, someone who will stand up for his teammates. And with the with absence of guys like Dorsett, I think it's the Canucks brass see it as vital that Branson helps to play that role. The second point is very related, is I think they're looking at Eric Branson to be a culture carrier. And this is stuff that we don't necessarily see, don't necessarily see on the ice. And it's more stuff that happens in the locker room or in the community or in closed door meetings. And hear me out here. I think especially if the Sedins retire at the end of the season, and right now it's 50-50 if they do, but let's say the Sedins retire, let's say Vanek gets traded by next week's deadline, then you're really looking at a, a, a hole, a void when it comes to locker room leadership. Yes, Bo Horvat will be that guy and he's tr trending very quickly to be that guy. And you, got, you have a veteran like Sam Gagne, Alex Edler will be a veteran. But you don't, then you have a lot of these middle, you know, mid 20s age guys, and then guys like, young guys like Brock Besser and Jake Vertan, and so on and so forth. So maybe, not maybe, I really think that the Canucks look to, are looking to Eric Branson to be a locker room leader. And you can see why. He's got a physical presence, as we've talked about. He's very good with the media, he's awesome in the community. Decent looking guy, so you know he, he makes for a good interview or he makes for good features for Canucks TV or whatever it may be. Um, just look at the whole um, jacket that he bought in China as a good example of that. But in essence, he's not afraid to stand up, answer the tough questions in the locker room, and be a spokesperson for the team. So again, picture the Sedin's gone, picture Vanek gone. You're losing a lot of leadership, a lot of old guys, but you're losing a lot of leadership in the locker room. And I can see that the Canucks are looking for Eric Branson to be one of those locker room leaders and one of those culture setters. And again, it relates back to Derek Dorsett. Derek Dorsett is one of those guys, would have been one of those guys, but with his unfortunate retirement, that's another veteran that the Canucks will lose and will not have in their locker room. So pretty simple today. Two quick reasons. You know, I'm okay with the signing. I'm not absolutely thrilled by it, but I'm certainly not going to be as upset as a lot of other fans seem 
uh, that they're going to be. So I'm okay with the signing, especially with Gibranson's improved play play in the last couple of weeks. And obviously, the it looks like the Canucks want him to be a big part of, of next year's team and going forward. And that's because of two things. His grit and toughness on the ice and his presence and as a lo- locker room leader and as a culture carrier for the club. Canucks fans, what do you think? Leave a comment below. I know you're going to be split on this topic so i'd love to read what you think and react to it also if you haven't done so already i invite you to subscribe to this youtube channel have a great day hope the canucks win tonight god bless and go canucks go